Can we invent a more comprehensive way of designing, which will integrate the built world with our larger ecosystem, the biosphere? Can we find a way of life which will create a harmony between nature, technology, and humanity? During the Industrial Age, engines and fossil fuels exploded the limits of local ecosystems. Distant resources were brought together in the process of mass production. Industry, on an unimagined scale, transformed the landscape, while the goods which poured from the production lines transformed our values. The machine, precise, standardized, specialized, inexhaustible, seem to promise a future of unlimited growth. The environmental consequences of design seemed remote. When Fuller remarked that good hardware was one of the few irrefutable proofs of clear thinking, I took that to heart. It's an old adage, actually, that tools are extensions of your body, and like pliers are just very strong fingers, and a hammer is just a very hard fist. But I found that a whole group of tools is an extension of your mind, uh, and then it enables you to, to bring your ideas into uh, physical form. And actually what you're doing is you're adding so much energy to the idea that other people can see it. Proof of concept work is what gets done in here. I call this place a three-dimensional sketch pad. You find that not very many people are living their life the way you're living. And I look around me and I see very few people my age especially are living the kind of life that I'm living. But I regard my life as an experiment, and it's an experiment that has not, the, the result has not always been wonderful. But I certainly wouldn't say that anything is unsuccessful because you always learn from it. After you discover what sort of human being is being tried with your particular genetic makeup, then you should drive that just as far as you can to see what it's good for. And I think that's your responsibility. And I think also that it is the responsibility of designers, people acting as designers, to carry out their ideas all the way to the point of living in them so that you don't go home at 5 o'clock that you live in what you're doing, which is kind of an ultimate proof. You don't, you don't hire somebody else to do your living for you. It's not a simulation that you're actually doing the deed yourself. So you become the world's expert on whatever it is you're doing. And you look around you, and you can say, there's really not anybody I can ask for advice. And then you know you're doing OK. When Bucky opened it, it was quite an experience because here was this tiny little structure. It was only 30 feet in diameter. And he completely understood what we were doing. That it was heating and cooling itself, that it was providing sustenance, that it was providing this deeply almost spiritual feeling it had. And Bucky walked into it, and as you know, it was very close to the end of his life. And he said, this is a dream of mine fulfilled. This is the stuff of my dream stuff fulfilled. The integration of nature and architecture. Missing.